in these days when the ability to choose is so prominent, I choose to praise God. I choose to tell of God's works, and I choose to rejoice. Top of the morning to you. So, when reading Psalm 9 through the eyes of love, we're met with quite a few declarations about the psalmist's mindset when it comes to thinking and experiencing God. In verse 1 through 2, he says, I will praise you, God. In other words, I choose to praise you, Father. I will tell of your works and deeds. I choose to rejoice in you. I choose to be in high spirits. I choose to praise your name, Most High. Why does the psalmist choose to do these things? Verse 3 through 6 tells us, God did the following things that inspired the psalmist to make these choices. God defeated his enemy. God used the standard of righteousness when judging. God rebuked the nations as he, when he found them lacking of righteousness. God destroyed the wicked. He cut off the enemy. God overthrew the enemy cities. Now they are forgotten. All these inspirational victories gave the psalmist confidence that God could be counted on and will be consistent in his judgments using righteousness as the standard. On a personal basis, the psalmist says that we can be confident that when evil attacks, verse 9, you, Lord, are a place of refuge and high tower for the oppressed in times of trouble. All that is required is in verse 10, personally know the Lord enough to trust and depend on him and have confidence in the fact that he won't leave us when we seek him. What should our reaction be to such good news? Verse 11, sing praises to the Lord. Why? Verse 12, you avenge the blood of your people shed unjustly. Thanks to God's mercy and grace, anytime we experience trouble, we can cry out for help. Then we just sit back and watch God's work by catching our enemies in the same trap they set for us, sending them back to the pit of Sheol. Verse 17 reminds us that this applies to nations as well who forget about God. Their destination will be a place of fear and humility. Have a great day.